And our next uh, uh, speaker is actually our special guest, Mr. Uh, uh, <laughs> Miroslav Varga. So, uh, Mr. Varga, please uh, uh, join me. Uh, and uh, Mr. Varga is a uh, Google uh, certified trainer with the uh, longest record I in this region, maybe even wider, uh, which can uh, help us uh, understand data. So, uh, uh, Mr. Varga, uh, it's it's honor and uh, um, uh, to have you here. So, uh, stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, I was afraid that a lot of you would now stand up and <laughs> go outside. <laughs> uh, thank you for staying, and uh, because every speaker so far has teached us some things. I would like to teach you also something, but to be able to learn, you have to cooperate with me. So, please, the first thing I'm asking you is to raise your hand and smile like you have seen the most beautiful person in the world. <laughs> yes, please, everybody hands up, please. Oh, that's, that's it, that's it. That's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What have you done? You have just signed the terms and uh, conditions, and nobody has a clue what I will do with this picture. I will put it on my Facebook profile, and I will write the sentence. I asked the audience who liked my presentation. <laughs> I asked the audience who has lost this 50 euros I have found in the entrance. <laughs> and I asked the audience who would like to get <laughs> drunk this evening. And you <laughs> so you don't know what you are doing. So please be careful. You will see why later on. I hope this first lecture, this first uh, thing was interesting. What is a MarTech specialist? Uh, MarTech was invented about 2010, 2010. And I will start uh, what a MarTech specialist is not. Uh, he is not efficient and he is not effective. Because according to Peter Drucker, there are some uh, <laughs> descriptions about effectiveness and efficiency and we are not effective, we are not efficient. Why? Because we are working in marketing. And marketing is a hard thing to understand because you are working with people and people are actually the problem, not the technology. The technology is very simple. <coughs> so, I'm, I, I work in a company that's called Escape. Escape is uh, established in 2003 in the city of Osijek in Croatia. And we have uh, earned all the most important awards uh, in our industry. What was important for us, we have, we have uh, uh, been awarded, uh, uh, awarded with. Um, maybe a better, a better description of our work is uh, this, this uh, tweet from Mr. Avenash Kaushik. Maybe some of you heard about him, maybe not. He was, uh, until a month ago, uh, the Google Analytics evangelist in Google. So he was the top person in the world for Google Analytics. Have you ever opened Google Analytics? Some of you? At least one? Okay, wow. Now, now you're talking. <laughs> uh, so he was the guy in charge of Google Analytics. He left because of this Google Analytics 4 that we praised this morning. <laughs> And he was listening to one of my presentations. And then he was a little bit confused. He told us, you are, you are Balkan idiots. You are crazy people. You should go to a facility and ask for professional help. Because you're doing things differently. And actually, in polite English, it is uh, thanks for the creativity. That's the description of what we are doing. We are doing things completely different. I'm a mechanical engineer. I have n 
absolutely no education in marketing. I have no edge. Uh, actually, I don't have any education at all. During my my <laughs> studying, I was only drinking and and uh, playing with cards, and that was the way <laughs> I went to school. But later on, it showed me that this was the best way because I have a very strong network of similar people, <laughs> and we can talk about anything, anywhere, anytime. Uh, the guys that were only only learning there, uh, unfortunately, some directors or managers or t or whatever they have to 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 have a tie, a suit. I can come like <laughs> a little bit uh, a retarded person. So uh, so I was even introduced as a retarded person. Uh, you know, I'm a person that is a special guest, and special people have special needs. <laughs> so I, I I explained yesterday. Please. Don't introduce me, but uh, okay. So let me show you what is the problem with people. People are embracing changes very, very fast if they like it. On the picture uh, on top is the Fifth Avenue in New York on the Easter Monday, 1900. And you can see there is a lot of uh, horse carriages and one car. Only one car. Thirteen years later, it's again Easter Monday, it's again the Fifth Avenue, and there is only one horse carriage. Everything, everybody else is driving a car. Only thirteen years. And we are talking about uh, embracing fast mobile phones, whatever. <laughs> it, it's, it's human behavior. Maybe even, even worse for me is this, uh, the picture on top is a hard disk with a capacity of five megabytes. So five megabytes are being installed in a, in a research center. The picture under, uh, on, on the bottom is a hard disk with one terabyte capacity. Maybe not hard disk, but some storage facility. Moore's law, we are in the IT industry, Moore's law is stating that we are doubling about every 18 months uh, the capacity and uh, are uh, uh, splitting the price in half. Um, if, cars, if cars would have been developed so fast as microprocessors, Today's cars would go to the sun and back twice during one hour and uh, would have a fuel consumption of one drop annually. That's the equivalent between microprocessors and cars. So you have the, the now the picture how, how dynamic is our industry. It's, it never gets boring. It <laughs> it's only more and more. Uh, 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 it's fast, faster and faster. So, <coughs> what is actually a MarTech specialist? A person that is on the edge of several different uh, areas, uh, usually marketing, technology, and mathematics is always, always there. Actually, it's maybe the better description is uh, behavioral science, game theory, and psychology because we are working with people, and people, I told you at the beginning, people are problem. We are a problem to ourselves. <coughs> Let me show you how I know that we are a problem. When I had a lecture uh, in front of uh, my colleagues from Texas, I told them a MarTech specialist is a person that analyzes everything, because that's the task of a MarTech engineer. When you analyze things, then you can find out what should be done better in any industry. And they told me, oh, come on, please analyze the truck register table from Texas. And that's the truck registry register table. And I, they, they have stayed and drink. And I went to my hotel room and have analyzed the whole the night the Texas truck plate. So what I, I have found out I find out that Texas is called the Lone Star State, and I ask them which one of these stars 
is the Lone Star. And uh, nobody didn't know. So as a MarTech specialist, you have to a specialist, you have to come to a company and ask them, okay, you have some company policy, why? And nobody usually knows why. Because we have always done things like that. That's the usual uh, 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 attitude I see in companies. So the first thing was a little bit scary, but uh, the more scary is that nobody from Texas can obey uh, 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 the laws, the, the regulations of the Department of Justice, because uh, the Department of Defense, because uh, in the United States every uniform should uh, be on the shoulder, and the star should always face uh, the direction of movement, and the state has to be represent as it is, so you cannot turn it in any way. If you check the picture of Texas, and if you obey that the star should always go in the direction of, of moving, moving, then a Texas soldier can only run like this. Because the star should point to the direction of movement. And the state should be as it is. And that was a little bit more scary. And then I, I told them, I know, I have a better name for Texas. Texas should be the three-leg horse country, because only in Texas horses have three legs. <laughs> and then there were, oh, come on, nobody ever thought about that. And at the end, I told them, please, whatever drugs you are using, send it over the ocean, because we need this stuff also. And they looked at me strangely, and I showed them this sad fact. The only country, the only state in the world where people can see through the moon, see stars behind the moon, that is Texas. Send us, please, these drugs. This is super something. And then they, okay, now we know, now we know what Avinash meant when he told us that you are creative. Uh, that's the job of a Martech specialist. You should analyze everything. You should take all the sources of information you can find and try to build a better solution for the company. And let me just be plain and simple. It's 95% uh, of the time it's impossible. So. I, I couldn't change the truck plate in, of Texas. So these are this uh, seven, actually it's six, but uh, I have a seventh one, not, not on the slide. I will not read it. We have only seven problems in, in our business. And I will show you these problems. The first one is, in mathematics, it's super duper. One and one is always two. And there is no other solution, uh, except if you are talking to a, a stockbroker, then one and one is uh, uh, three minus one. <laughs> so, uh, if you ask people and they give you one accurate solution, that doesn't mean that there are no other accurate solutions, especially in marketing. Uh, uh, maybe every one of us has an accurate solution for a problem. That's, that's people, and that's the problem. You cannot use math directly and implement it into for people. You have to look at things a little bit wider. The second problem, uh, this is not Bill Gates that you are seeing, this is George Akerlof. He is the Nobel Prize winner in economy. Uh, and he has made a paper proven that there is no uh, information equilibrium, there is no information symmetry, never ever in the market. And all the economic theories and marketing theories are uh, having this assumption that there is a symmetry, that we know, everybody knows everything. It's, and he proved it's not true. He invented this new term, it's information asymmetry. And he has studied the market of used cars salesmen. I don't know how it is in your country, but I know that in our country, used car salesmen are the most rotten 
salespeople you can imagine, because they are exploiting the information asymmetry. They know that the car is not in bulk condition. They know that the car has crashed. They know something's wrong. But if you talk to him, oh, this car, that's something especially for you. That's, that's the best car you can find, the best car you can imagine. Uh, George Akelov has done a study in the United States and proved that people that are exploiting the information asymmetry uh, will go uh, on the bankruptcy. They will go out of the market. Because sooner or later, people will find out you're lying. And will tell everybody, don't go there, he's a liar. He will sell you a wrong car. And will lie that is, it's a good car. So, uh, people's behavior cannot be des described with statistics only. It should be described with game theory. And game theory is a tricky thing. It's, it's, it's about people and communication. Uh, the next problem I, I see very often is the problem of averages, especially marketing. Uh, uh, the uh, people from marketing they like they like averages. On average, our average customer, our average. There are no averages. This beautiful statue is the statue called Norma. Norma is the average of fifteen thousand students in Stanford. And then, after measuring them, the arm, the finger, the nose, whatever, they gave those measurements to a sculpture. And the sculpture has sculpt, sculpted Norma. And then they had this nice idea, let's invite all the Normas for dinner to show them how beautiful they are in the sculpture. And you know how many girls fit from 15,000 to Norma's average? Hmm? Zero. There is a Norman also. Norman has one dimension more, but never mind. Uh, uh, there is also no Norman and no Norma. And please, whenever you talk about averages, uh, remember this picture. This both of this group of people are on average 28 years old. But you cannot have the same message, the same approach, and the same marketing incentives for them. It's impossible. Uh, there is another, another example from they tried to build the uh, average cockpit for the average pilot in the uh, US Air Force, and they find out we have no average pilots. We have to build cockpits that are adjustable. It's impossible to have average users. The next one is uh, very often people are confusing causality with correlation. Uh, you can see on the picture, uh, Tyler Riggan is a nice guy always making fools of, of uh, public uh, policy. Uh, he has found out that there is a very strong correlation between suicides by hanging, suffocation and uh, strangulation. Uh, with the investment of the government to science, space, and technology. And then he wrote the president, he showed him his, these lines and uh, wrote to the president, please stop invest in space, science, and technology, then people will not uh, kill themselves anymore. And there, is, uh, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, this kind of correlations, uh, please stop selling uh, uh, butter to people because uh, the consumption of butter is uh, uh, correlated with the number of divorces and so on. Uh, uh, this right picture is from Messerly. Messerly has made an uh, investigation uh, about Nobel Prize winners and uh, chocolate consumption per country. And then he wrote to his president, please, let us, uh, let's use all the budget for schools to buying chocolates to children. Because eating chocolate is providing, here is the proof, more Nobel Prizes to per capita. Uh, the problem is, actually, what should you do? Uh, it's called the, the Reichenbach's principle, principle of uh, common, uh, uh, Reichenbach's common cause principle, that's the, the, the 
sentence, the, the real one. Uh, Merseli had showed that Reichenbach was right because as richer the state is, more money can be invested in education and more money people have to buy chocolates. So it's not chocolate and Nobel Prize, it's actually something else. It's, and this is called Reichenbach's common cause uh, factor that is influencing two completely different data sets and you have to find usually it's hard, sometimes impossible. Uh, this is one of my, my favorite marketing example. Uh, uh, as you can see, there was the square cookie. And then some guy just get an idea, let's rotate it for 45 degrees. And now it's not the ordinary cookie, now it's the diamond cookie. And uh, they, the, the diamond shreddy, shreddy is the name of this cookie. And of course, all the, all the uh, consumer protection uh, um, um, NGOs were pissed off, and then they have to change. They are not diamond shreddies. There is the combo pack, the ordinary and the diamond shreddy in the same box. It's the same cookie. It's nothing else. But they, he, uh, this guy increased the sales of 20%, and that's that's really amazing if you if you look at the cookie market. So I don't say that you should. Uh, 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 rotate your <laughs> solutions for 45% to increase <laughs> something, but be, be, be careful. And uh, a lot of other studies have proven, for example, if you are on a meeting, you should prepare this meeting that everybody on the meeting has some hot beverage in his hand. It's proven that when you have a meeting with people that are having a hot beverage, cocoa, coffee, tea, whatever, they have more trust. They, you make a better deal. You, can, you, you, you will uh, get better grades. So when you invite someone to a meeting, uh, would you like to drink a coffee? It's very common here in the, in the Balkans. Uh, don't offer them cold beer or cold spritzer or whatever. Just some warm, warm, warm drink. And uh, we are here in a winery. It's proven that if you take the best sommeliers, the, the, the wine tasters in the world, and give them sometimes the same wine, but from a heavier bottle. As heavier the bottle is, the wine will get better grades. And that's human behavior. You cannot change it. That's, that's something that you have take in consideration if you are in the marketing industry. And there is a lot of beautiful, beautiful cases. I don't have time, uh, but if somebody wants to read more, he can do. I have uh, here uh, also very interesting cases. I will not uh, try to explain all of them. I will show you a video about the first example. It's the Ash experiment. Ash was a psychologist. And Ash had done something that is, uh, uh, he, he uh, investigated how company policy starts. So he has first put five monkeys in a cage. And then there was a banana uh, offered to the monkeys. And the first monkey who went to the banana caused the trigger that all the monkeys were, were uh, getting wet with ice cold water. And when the second monkey went to the banana, there was some screaming, <laughs> whatever. And the third time, they beat him up. Don't go to the banana. We have enough of this cold water. And then he put one monkey out of the cage and put a new one that was never getting wet with this ice cold water. And the new one, of course, went towards the banana and they beat him up. And after the time, he has changed all the five original monkeys with new monkeys that were never uh, uh, sprayed with ice-cold water. But whenever a monkey went to the banana, they beat him up. Nobody knows why, but they beat him. That's, that's how things should be done. Uh, uh, we are acting like these five monkeys in the cage. And I will show you how <coughs> marketing 
is manipulating you. I'm also unfortunately do that, but I have to put, I have four children, so please <laughs> be, <laughs> be considerable. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, even without saying anything, no sounds, nothing, people can be manipulated to change their attitude completely. Uh, you will see it on, on the movie. Uh, the second one is Joshua Bell, famous violinist, playing three and a half million dollar violin in a metro station, earning $30 that day. The next day he has a concert, uh, the, the ticket was $400, he gets standing ovation, whatever. And that is the proof that uh, young people often come to me and, and say, you know, they are not paying me enough. No, 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 they pay you exactly as much as they think you are worth. You should change the context. You cannot change them. You should stop playing the violin in the metro. Go to the concert hall. Uh, that, that is uh, the, the Joshua Bell experiment. It has been proved with Ed Sheeran also. But uh, 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 I like Schlenker and Lurie's experiment. People love to be told lies. And they know that they are being told lies. And still, they love it more. Uh, there was an actor pretending to be a car uh, repairing specialist, auto mechanicer. And people went to the uh, car reparation station, and he came out, you know what? After I finish with this car, you will fly in the sky, you will see. You know that you will not fly with this car. But the other one, that was, oh, you know, we don't know exactly what it is. We will put all the computers, and then I will call a friend of mine also to check what's happening with the car, you know. I'm not so sure. And people had this strange uh, um, evaluation that the guy that lied to them, but was very convincing in his lie, that he was a better expert. So that's the reason why everybody thinks that I'm an expert. Um, <laughs> let me show you. And, and you can, you can, you can uh, do whatever, uh, check all these uh, beautiful cases. I don't have time for all of them. But I will show you how are only four stores, two minutes, less than two minutes, one minute and 20 seconds, enough to change your behavior completely without telling you anything. Uh, look at this. Uh, I, hope every, I hope the internet will be fast enough. <laughs> Can you put the sound? So, you walk into an elevator and naturally you turn and face the door, right? It's just what we do without even thinking. All right. In the blue t-shirt, that is Nadia. She is an innocent passerby. Has nothing to do with this. Everybody else in that elevator, they all work for Would You Fall For That. They are all in on the experiment. They are all purposefully facing the wrong way. Nadia is facing the front. You can just see the back of her head wearing the blue t-shirt. That's Nadia. She is facing the front of the elevator like a normal human being. Everybody else is facing the back. We're playing this to you in real time, no editing, as it actually happened. Okay, floor two. Rebecca gets off, Emily gets on, she also works for us. We're swapping people in and out to reinforce the behavior. Emily's acting like it's the most normal. Oh, Nadia's turned. Nadia, it... okay, her bag is slipping off her shoulder. She's nervously playing with it. Yeah. Nadia is now halfway round. Will she go any further? Emily gets off, Mike gets on. Again, Mike works for the show. Presses his button, faces the back like it's the most normal thing in the world, like he does it every day. Nadia is really feeling the pressure right now. I'm not going to see anyone else. Scott's making some small talk. He was on Celebrity Rehab, I think. She's looking towards the back of the elevator because everybody else is. Floor four. Fourth floor, Mike gets off. 
Lauren gets on. Lauren also works for us. She's in. Oh, and Nadia, Nadia, Nadia has gone. The fourth floor, Nadia has turned all the way around. She's looking at the back of the elevator. That is not normal human behavior. Nadia is looking at the back of the elevator. Four floors without telling you anything can push you to behave not as you behave normal. Normal people always look at the buttons in a elevator. But as you can see, it's only four floors, less than two minutes. And marketing is doing that to you every day. I will not, I will not go now in details because I have to live and earn, of course. But uh, if you can uh, uh, switch back to the, to the presentation, please. Uh, this guy is a Hungarian Jew. He went to the United States uh, during the Second World War and he was a mathematician. His task was in the Stanford Statistical Group to prevent planes to be shot down. And the generals had this beautiful idea. Let's just check on the planes where the plane were hit, then we will reinforce this part and problem solved. And then he proved, no, 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 people, you're wrong. Don't do that. We should reinforce on planes the places where the planes that came uh, back were not hit because the, not, uh, the, the, the planes that were hit there, they never had a chance to come home. And what are people doing in marketing? They are checking why this customer has come, wow. They are checking the planes that came back. And the main task is not to check the planes that came back, but try to understand why this 95, 98% of people didn't do any action that I expected. Not why 2% of people made a conversion. The conversion rate is about 2%. You should completely change the attitude, not why people are buying. You should try to understand why these other non-buyers have not buy. Where is the problem? And there, that the money is there. Uh, and for the end, I have a proof that people, uh, uh, there are thousands, th thousands of cases, I don't trust me in this matter, people not buy rationally, people buy emotionally. People are not rational beings. Uh, 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 the proofs are everywhere. I will just show you, uh, Rob Walker and Joshua Glenn went to eBay, you know probably about eBay. They have bought on eBay 200 items uh, for the uh, start price of $1 or $1.50, it depends. They bought 200 items, paid for those 200 items $250. And then they asked their colleagues, short story light, uh, writers, marketing specialists, to write a short story for any item they picked. And then they put the same items back on eBay and sold them for $8,000. The winner was this little mouse. Uh, it was sold, but, uh, it was bought for $1 and sold for $162.5. And uh, there are a lot of uh, papers, a lot of things prove that we are not buying the objective value, but we are buying the subjective value, and it's different for anyone here. We, we would never agree how much should this chair be charged. And uh, to help you not to become victims of some stupid photographer, like I was in the beginning, you should know that 15 data points, uh, Google guarantees I need 50 data, 15 data points to, to uh, know exactly the name and the surname of any one of you. you. You just have to tell me 15 things about anyone and I will tell this is this guy or this girl. Uh, in Facebook it's even worse. Uh, Facebook, and that was the basic of Cambridge Analytica, it's, it's enough that the machine check 10 of your likes. 
and the machine knows you better than your colleague at the workplace. 70 likes are enough that I know more about you than the, peop the person that is living with you. Not, not in a, you have no emotional connection, but just living together. 150 likes is enough to know about you more than your mother, brother, father, family. And 300 is enough to know you better than your life partner. Just check 300 things. And three final takeaways. We live in strange time. Uh, you have, it's very hard, it's very hard to make a strategy that will end up with success. You should, you should look at marketing, not I have paid something and I get back something, but you should look at marketing as an investment with the hope that the shares will rise. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so are we back? Okay. So once more, wow. Uh, thank you, uh, 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 Miroslav. It was uh, it was uh, great uh, as uh, as uh, as always.